Great to have you, Hi. Zena Balogun Mwachuku. Yes. It's really, really good to have you on the show on Arise 360. So I'm really, really curious. You're being interviewed, and I know that you've also been on TV and you've interviewed yeah. a lot of people. So what would you say is the one thing that you can never forget? Maybe annoying, maybe happy, but the one unforgettable moment you've had trying to interview someone. Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> this is very clear. So uh, when the spot was on mm -hmm. um, with myself, Lamide and Ibuka, we had a particular guest that was just way too cool for school. Um, it was a musician, mm -hmm. and he just didn't really want to talk. So, like, he had his shades on, and you'd ask him things, and he'll just be very, like, uh, flat. Cool. Yeah, yeah, and that's not fun for you, who's trying exactly. to draw out as much information as you can for your viewers. So, yeah, I think, collectively, the entire crew will will say that that person was. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you who it was. Sadly. Um, but yeah, that was the worst interview that we All had. All right. So Zainab Balogun Wachiku, it's yes. great to have you again. So let's get to know you better. You know, okay. let's get to know the Zainab that not everybody gets to see on a regular day. So you did a movie really, really good. I mean, you've done a couple of them. You've done a wedding party. You've done yeah. a soldier story. Very recently, you had God Call Me. But let's go through these movies sequentially. Okay. Let's start with the one that I feel really, really just put you up there because you were this hysterical event plan out talking about yeah. wedding parties what was it like walking on that set um it was probably the biggest set that i had been on in nigeria um I, I can't even tell you how many extras and people we had on the project um and being a ebony life you know tv family member and then being invited to audition for this it was just it was an amazing experience and i think they knew the character they wanted me to play so the moment I read the script and I, I read about Wonu, I just thought she is, she's hilarious. Like, she's just, <laughs> she's funny. Do you she's, feel like there's an element of you as a person in um, that character? I think in terms of being organized and wanting to be very proper um, and, you know, get things done the right way, we share that. Uh, but her crazy, we don't have that in common <laughs> at all. So being on set with all of these amazing people, people that you watch on TV, um, people who I hadn't, you know, I hadn't worked with before, your RMDs, your Shola mm -hmm. Shokwali, and great like, you know, people. great people, um, uh, Auntie Ritty Doyle, and then, you know, you have them who are veterans in the industry, then you have us who are trying sort of trying to do up. what we're doing right now. <laughs> so it was really fun, because they were the parents on set, like, Amazing. they took care of us, like, there'd be days where, you know, this person's buying us meals, or that Ooh. person is bringing something <laughs> special to set, and that's all you can ask for um, is that good synergy and chemistry on set. Okay, so growing up, did you always know this is who you would turn out to be, an actress, entertainer, TV? Because so, we know you have a law background, so we're yeah. kind of like, growing up, what was it for you? Who did you want to become when you were an adult? So when I was younger, I wanted to be a lawyer. Um, and I, I just knew that I could talk a lot, I could argue a lot, <laughs> I just thought, you know, it'd be easy to, to win cases, and that's what I studied for. Um, but while I was at uni, I was balancing my creative life and my academic life. So I was modeling, and um, eventually you get to a point as a model where you get sent off for um, commercial work. So mm -hmm. as an extra, maybe an advert or something that requires very minimal acting. Um, but I just remember being on those sets, like a commercial can take two days, mm -hmm. and not complaining. I'd take my, um, my books with me, I'd read, and I just, I loved how you could take this thing from paper to TV mm -hmm. and, you know, to cinema. Uh, and I knew from there that I sort of wanted to be a part of this industry. So I started auditioning for actual speaking roles. I wasn't trained or anything, but these guys were giving me the job and I was like, wait, if they think I can do it, maybe <laughs> I can do it. Like, this is an entire scam right now, but I, I'm running with it. Yeah, so yeah. I would, yeah, it, it, it was a scam. It was a big one. But you see, the thing is, there's so many people trying to get into the zone as well, and they would say it is the most difficult thing ever. Mm. So for you, what was it like? What were the challenges? Was it easy? Was it not easy? Do you feel like maybe because, you know, you're schooled in the UK and, you know, you just had that background, it was sort of seamless for you? Or did you still have to, like, One, work your I, way through? I don't, I don't think that any amount of foreign or international schooling or living can prepare you for the workforce in Nigeria. Mm. Um, I think people are given the opportunities that they have based on uh, their work ethic, based on their willingness to learn. I moved here having done so many things in London as an actress, as a model, as a TV presenter, that the moment I got here, it didn't matter because mm. nobody cared. <laughs> nobody cared about the fact that 
um, I did a series for BBC or Channel 4, or um, I had my own um, online TV or show. Or you were in or, Dark Knight. Or, yes, or that I was in Dark Knight. Like, nobody cared. It was about proving yourself. Mm. And I knew that it was going to be hard to get into Nollywood because it's also a very tight-knit family. So a lot of the questions I was getting was, um, who are you? We don't know who you are, so you need to show us who you are. So I wouldn't get called for auditions. Um, I would get you know, very minimal acting work, which was difficult to do because I was a TV presenter, full-time TV presenter at the time, and I was living in Calabar, which meant um. that I didn't have the flexibility mm -hmm. to maybe go off and shoot for 10 days. Um, and I remember the moment I got the Ebony Life gig. Um, for me, it was a strategic decision. Okay. Because Nollywood needed to know who I was before they would sort of open the door. So taking TV was a branding thing. Um, get your face out there. Become a name and somebody that people would recognize. So mm -hmm. when you do send a message and say, hey, I want to audition, they're like, oh, yeah, we remember you. You're the girl from TV. Okay, sure. Um, come over. Come over. Um, and then people started to think that I was a TV presenter transitioning into acting. Not exactly. Knowing that You're actually, an actress. Yes. Um, who just, who went, just into went into TV to, um, to get the exposure. But I loved it. I learned so much. Um, and I think it prepared me for uh, you know, being on the big screen as well. Amazing. So now, just on the side note, Dark Knight Rises, that's yeah. a huge movie. I mean, as of today, it is DC's biggest movie second is Aquaman now yeah. so I really want to know what was it how did you even get the gig so um, you you're signed to a casting agency um, and you know the work comes into them and they uh, the client will say hey I need 10 girls who look like this this height blah 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 uh, so I was one of um, the ten. girls yes um, one of the girls uh, along with the boys and um, you'd have to tell them all the things that you could do, like I can drive a car, I can swim, I can sing, I can do all of this. And I was required to dance, like ballroom dancing. So I got the job, and they don't tell you that you're going for a big movie. The movies tend to have a different code name. So oh. Dark Knight had the code name Rex One. Wow. So you don't know what you're going in for. <laughs> So you do all the fittings, um, you wear all these fancy clothes, and you're told to be on set at 4 a.m. in West London. So I get up really early, I take the night bus, and I get to set, still not knowing what, what? is going on <laughs> or where I am. Um, you see, everybody's taken care of. It doesn't matter if you're a big star or you know a, a little star. There's a craft table. like this. Everything was just so organized and huge. So I get um, onto set. With my dancing partner, this guy, you know, you, you make friends with people. And I just remember like seeing Christian Bale, like with a walking stick. No. And I was like, is that Christian Bale? <laughs> and he's like, yeah. Again, you still don't know what you're doing yeah. because the scene was, um, it was a ballroom, it was a, a, like a dinner dancing scene. So he was wearing a tux, I still didn't know it was Batman. Um, <laughs> and he was walking around limping. So this was off camera, he was still in character. Uh, then I see him dancing with Anne Hathaway, and I'm like, oh, this no. is Batman. <laughs> um, and then you see Samuel L. Jackson, and you're like, yeah, this is really Batman. <laughs> so for me, it was such a defining moment in my career uh, because it was being, it was then and there that I said, this is what I could do. Like the amount of work that went into that one scene, the number of people that were on set, the machines that were on set, I was like. This, this, I could do this. Yeah. I could be okay with doing this. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, now let's talk about this movie that literally is making everybody think, why am I on this earth? Like, yeah, what am I supposed to people cry. Making people, Really, it's, it's really getting people very emotional. I was at the Experience Lagos oh, and okay. they put the, the trailer. trailer and then there was that drop. Yeah. And literally, everybody went, ah! Literally, people screamed because they're like, oh my goodness. I really need to ask, because yeah. I'm sure that is one thing a lot of people are wondering, how did this happen? Because it looked so real. Um, the Nemsha team are uh, great. Uh, they are people who like to, they, they aspire for so much more. So it was more than just, let's do a movie, let's get great cameras, let's have a you know, decent story. It was, we're going to push ourselves, special effects wise, mm -hmm. um, which meant pushing your talent as well. Uh, being on set of God Calling was very, very grueling. 
um, emotionally a lot yeah. more than physically, uh, simply because of the depth of the story. Um, but that particular scene, I remember reading it in the script and saying to Bibi Shashere, the director, Bibi, right. how, how are you planning on doing this thing? Because <laughs> I see something about jumping off a third main land bridge. I just want you to know that I am not <laughs> jumping off a third main land bridge, so how are we going to do it? So we talked it through. They made sure that I was comfortable. Um, and we did a lot of stunt work to, okay. to see how we were going to make it happen. And if you watch the movie and you watch the credits, you'll actually see how... We did that scene. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Okay, so now, really though, for you, what has this movie created? Like in terms of how emotional the movie was, the depth of the movie. Would you say it has made you really, really question, you know, everything you thought? Because a lot of people would say, "This is crazy. This is not normal." But yeah. this is good. So for you, who act, I mean, other people just watching the movie will make them feel this way. For you, who acted in the movie, how did this affect your life? Did you actually have to be, you know, did it mess with you emotionally? Um, so, I mean, any role that you have to dig extremely deep for, um, it requires so much more, mm -hmm. uh, physically and emotionally. Like, I, would, I remember driving back home and uh, looking at my security guards, and they're just like, Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, I'm okay, I'm fine. Because they'll see me either come back really dirty or, you know, tears, kind of like I've got dry tears all over my face. Um, and it's then that you realize that you're really pulling from somewhere. And when you get into the cinemas and you see people leaving the cinema crying, you see people sending you messages and saying, this made me think about this. Uh, we, we had a lady in Port Harcourt who was like, she literally just lost her daughter like a couple of months ago. So this for her was some, you know, form of healing. Um, you have husbands who, you know, look at their wives different and who, who learn about being a bit more, uh, a bit more connected emotionally and spiritually. Yeah. So for me, it was more than just a movie that was about making money. It was, you know, like a, uh, like ministry work because you're sharing, um, you're sharing something different and you're touching people. And okay. when you make people feel in a movie like what, uh, what's it called? What Black Panther does, what mm -hmm. Infinity War does. Like I, I remember leaving the cinema and I was like, oh my God. Really, I cried. Yeah. I cried So, Infinity. So that's what you want to be able to do for Nigerian audiences as well because I think they, they ask for it and they deserve it. Amazing. So now, Zena, before I let you go real yeah. quick, I really want to know, this movie was one where you, re you literally lived out someone's greatest fear. Yeah. You know? So for you, what would you say your greatest fear is? Like, if you had to live it out, you probably oh, wouldn't even know when to start. Um, I, I always say that my greatest fear is not being happy. I think that's, like, the worst thing. Um, because happiness is it's connected to pretty much everything. Your way mm -hmm. of life, your relationships with people. Um, and your your well-being as an individual. I think there are so many things going on around us right now that, and, and so many people are unhappy for so many different reasons. Um, so for me, yeah, not having that sound mind and peace of happiness would be, yeah, the worst Ooh. thing. To okay, have. so what can we look forward to from you, Zena? More Gosh, falls. Twenty from more falls. <laughs> <laughs> um, that will be fun. Twenty nineteen <laughs> is going to be an interesting year. Um, twenty eighteen, I didn't expect it to kind of pick up the way that it did, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the challenges. I'm looking forward to many more opportunities as an actress and also outside of acting. I'm looking forward to um, giving more, doing more for uh, people who want to come into this crazy industry because it really is crazy. It is, but you see, every single day is just another day ready for a new challenge. Thank yeah. you so much, Zainab, for, for coming on Arise360. So you see, if you're like the rest of us trying to figure out that fall, how did it happen, what went into it, well, now you have to just go check out God Calling to find out. Keep on watching Arise360. We'll be right back.